Hi everyone, Dr. Nicola Ducham here. I wanted to talk a little bit today about the difference between N-acetylcysteine or NAC and glutathione. And it just occurred to me this morning as I was doing some research on mast cell activation syndrome, which I'm gonna share more information with you about um, in the coming weeks, that um, a lot of people take NAC as a supplement and may not fully understand everything it's doing. So I will tell you up front, I'm a huge glutathione fan and I'm not a huge fan of NAC. Now, there are times when NAC um, is more indicated than glutathione. So NAC has some actions of its own um, that are valid and it can be very helpful for some people. Um, and at the same time, a lot of people take NAC because it's a precursor to glutathione. And so the thought has always been, if you give the body more raw materials, it can convert it to glutathione by itself. And I feel like back in the day when some of the glutathione supplements were kind of less sophisticated, that was a very valid approach. Um, but my sense is that the glutathione supplements now are much better than they used to be. And so now we have a way to directly get glutathione in a way that's very well absorbed. So let's just take a step back and look at why would you take NAC as a supplement instead of just going directly to glutathione? Well, one reason is if you're not looking for the antioxidant benefits, you're looking for what NAC can do just by itself. So sometimes NAC is used for psychiatric conditions. Um, NAC can be helpful for improving insulin sensitivity. Um, NAC can be used to break up mucus production in the body. Um, and it can also boost certain neurotransmitters. So it can play a role in regulating mood. So there are just a few things NAC does, um, and it's completely valid to take NAC for those kinds of things. That's certainly just a few examples too. It's not an exhaustive list of the roles of NAC. However, if we are using NAC to create more glutathione in the body, my feeling is why not just take the glutathione and get it directly? Anytime we're asking the body to convert from one thing to another, it just puts another layer in. It's just one more thing, one more hoop to jump through, if you will. And it's the same goes with flax oil and fish oil. Flax oil will require the body to make one more step of conversion to get to your active omega-3s, whereas fish oil gives you that directly. Now, why would you take flax instead of fish? Well, obviously vegetarians, or some people just like to add flax oil to their smoothie. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but that's just another example of what we're talking about with the conversion piece. So yes, NAC may create more glutathione in the body. However, I've seen it come with a couple of downsides. I have seen, especially when I used to use it more in my younger, my younger patients, that NAC actually seemed to trigger um, intestinal yeast or candida. Um, so that was one of the things I had big concerns with because so many of my patients struggle with candida and we don't want to do anything that risks making it worse. So I had some concerns with NAC for that. Um, and then the other thing that I think is really important is that NAC can fuel histamine response and histamine release. And I think I certainly, as a practitioner, am just really becoming aware of how mast cell activation syndrome and how these histamine disorders or mast cell disorders are playing into, you know, my chronic patients with Lyme and mold illness and things like that. And so, again, it's important to look at if one's having mast cell issues, you know, what can you do to dampen it? And like I said, I'm going to be giving you lots more information on this in the coming weeks. What can you do to dampen it? How can you use diet? What supplements will help? You know, is it justified to do medication? Um, but the other piece is you want to make sure you're cutting out things that could boost histamine in a, in a way that's going to be detrimental to your health. And it's interesting to see some of the, um, some of the things that do that. And, and acetylcysteine has the potential to trigger that histamine response. So I mentioned a little bit before that glutathione 
didn't used to be sold or packaged in forms that were so absorbable. And the reason for that is just sort of regular glutathione. Like if you go to the health food store and buy a capsule and it says glutathione, the majority of that when you take it is going to denature in your stomach, right? It's not going to give you very good absorption. And I never suggest people just take a regular garden variety, non-liposomal glutathione product because I think they're mostly wasting their money. What we have now that I love is liposomal glutathione. And liposomal means that each molecule is, is surrounded by this little fatty layer, this lipid layer, and therefore it absorbs across the mucous membranes. All of our cells have the membranes are fatty acids. So if something is coated in fatty acids, it's going to help it to be able to cross. And so we end up with much, much better absorption of glutathione. Now the liquid glutathione, um, I personally use Research Nutritionals. I love their products. I think they come up with just the highest quality and the best things. Um, so their plain liquid glutathione um, just goes a teaspoon in water in the morning. They also had some have some flavored ones now, orange and watermelon. Glutathione is still kind of a sulfury compound. It's not everybody's favorite tasting thing. I'll give you my tip of the day though, is if you're taking liposomal vitamin C, you get the caramel vanilla one from Research Nutritionals, which is unbelievable. And you put your yucky, eggy glutathione in there and you end up with a really good tasting little morning shot of health. So that's my, that's my tip for the day. But the liposomal glutathione just gives you so much better absorption. So orange and watermelon um, are often easier to get into kids. And that's just taking a teaspoon right off the spoon. It's kind of more of a puddingy kind of consistency. There are some gel caps that are still liposomal. Um, we carry one brand in our office. They're pretty big gel caps, um, but for people who really just can't handle the smell or the taste, um, then the gel caps might be a viable option or for people who are traveling and just don't want it to be so messy or risk spillage or, or whatever. But, but the liquid glutathione, I'm making them sound worse than they are. They're really not so bad. So that's kind of my two cents on NAC versus glutathione. Like I said, NAC has uses of its own. It has benefits of its own. And so if you're taking NAC and getting benefits, then more power to you, right? I'm not saying that NAC is a bad thing. I'm just saying that as an antioxidant, using it as a precursor to glutathione, I really truly feel now that with the liposomal technology that is available to us, taking just the pure glutathione by itself is often the way to go. And I have seen more positive benefits from glutathione certainly over the years than I have from N-acetylcysteine. Great. So I hope that was useful for you and I will see you again very soon.